Okay, this is a simple mathematical card trick, but don't let that fool you. This one carries quite a punch. And it is certainly one to include in your repertoire of mathematical card effects. It really is mind-blowing. So I have a full deck of cards here. Uh, the jokers have been taken out, so it's just 52 cards. And we can give it a little cut, if you like, so that no one knows uh, what card's on top, let's say. And so what we're going to do is we're going to allow you to choose uh, any card in the deck here. Of course, the cards are face down. Now, you're not here, so I'll have to play your part. So maybe you choose, let's say, that one right there. Okay, that's the card you chose. Now, what I'm going to do is just very, very quickly scan through the cards and figure out, okay, what card is yours? I know what it is already. It's the Queen of Spades, okay? Well, that might be, <laughs> that might be chance, right? Might be luck that I did that. Okay, so let's just cut it again so we're at a new starting place. Uh, let's have you uh, point to or, you know, choose any card here. You want this one? Okay, let me just set it aside there and let's see if I can figure out really quickly what that card must be. Well, I know what it is. It's the four of spades now. Four of spades, very good. Okay, let's put it back there and give it a little mix. Um, we could have you cut the cards if you would like, if you were here. Okay, let's have you choose a card. Maybe you choose one near the top this time, which is just, whoops, just fine. Okay, I want you to kind of set your clock, <laughs> set your watch, and see how quickly I can find your card. I think your card is the King of Diamonds. That's what I think. The King of Diamonds? Yes, indeed. Very, very good. Okay, let's start fresh again. So just choose any card here. Maybe that one this time. Okay. So what is that card? Let's just see how fast we can find it here. I think it's the seven of spades. Why are we, <laughs> we keep finding on these spades? <laughs> That's pretty unlikely as well. Okay, let me just cut it a little bit easier than doing some other more complicated mixing there. Um, okay, let's have you choose another one at random. Okay, maybe that one right there. You're happy with that? Okay, let's see if we can find your card. Your card actually this time is the Six of Hearts. Ooh, finally, we got something that wasn't a spade, okay? Well, we can kind of do better than that. Why don't we go ahead and have you point to, uh, let's say, two consecutive cards, okay? So maybe you want uh, these two right there. Those two right there, that was, that's just fine. So let's see what cards those might be. Well, I think they're the Five of Clubs and the Eight of Spades. That's what I think they are. Five of Clubs and Eight of Spades. I was right. Should we try three? Should we try to find three cards? Whoa, that's going to be tough. So I'll just kind of deal those, uh, <laughs> fan those out. So maybe you want, uh, let's say, these three right there. Sorry, <laughs> dropping things everywhere. <laughs> Fix that. So let's just see if we can find those pretty quickly here. Well, I think this time your cards are the Ace of Diamonds, Nine of Diamonds, and Seven of Diamonds. How in the world did you do that? Ace of Diamonds, Nine, and Seven of Diamonds. Should we push our luck and do four? Ooh, that's going to be hard, I think. So let's just uh, fan these out. You want four of them? Four is so. Oh, which ones? These four right here? Are you sure? Okay, you're happy with those? Okay, let's see how we do. See if we can get all four of these crazy cards here. I think it's the uh, Queen of Diamonds, Five of Spades, Eight of Clubs, and Ten of Clubs. That's what I think they are. Queen of Diamonds, Five of Spades, Eight of Clubs, and Ten of Clubs. We nailed it. Okay, well, I think you get the idea that uh, this is an amazing effect. <laughs> and it makes you look like an absolute genius, okay? Uh, just a real wizard, actually. Okay, so how does this work? How does this work? Well, it uses something called a cyclic deck, a cyclic construction, and in fact, it's a two-cycle. So if you go on to study um, 
some of the principles in my online course, the Hidden Structures online course, or look at some of my other effects um, that are under the category of extreme math card magic, you'll learn about what are called two cycles. And so what a two cycle is, it's a, a structure where you have a pattern of you know, values or cards, and then that pattern repeats a second time. Okay, so if you had like an ace of clubs, two of clubs, three of clubs, and four of clubs, followed by ace of hearts, two of hearts, three of hearts, and four of hearts, uh, we would say that's a, a two cycle uh, of cycle length uh, four, and the uh, characteristic of interest to us would be card value. So you'd have an ace, two, three, four, ace, two, three, four, kind of repeating. Wow. Well, that kind of thing doesn't really seem to be happening here, does it? I mean, look, can you detect any repeating pattern? Well, that's one of the reasons for the genius of this crazy thing. Uh, but there is. There is a pattern that repeats here. So look at this. So that's a jack. Um, and, and if you want to just focus on the colors, not so much the suits. So we have, so red jack. So what we have going on, so focus on the red jacks here. And then move one to the right. Mm, wow, we have a pair of red eights. Move another one to the right. Ooh, two red fours. And then a couple of black jacks. <laughs> two red threes, two red fives, black aces, and so forth. So if you look at this carefully, it is a repeating pattern of card value and card color, okay? Well, you might wonder, how does that help us? <laughs> how, does this, how does that help us with this effect and finding uh, the missing card or missing cards? Well, because of this repeating pattern, what will happen, in fact, let me just kind of, we'll illustrate kind of um, how it's working and then I'll show you how to build a packet like this because it doesn't have to be exactly this arrangement of the cards. You can create your own arrangement of the cards that will work just as well as the one I've created here. Okay, so what we're going to do, let me just um, point out, um, so if we, oh, well to begin with, since it's cyclic, that means we can cut the cards. Okay, that's, that's one of the properties of a repeating pattern, something that repeats twice. Um, it actually doesn't matter what the starting place is. In fact, maybe I'll even just kind of write that out for you really fast here. So, if, like if you have an ace of clubs, a two of clubs, three of clubs, and four of clubs, uh, followed by an ace of hearts, a two of hearts, three of hearts, four of hearts. And here we're only focused on the uh, card value, like is it an ace, is it a two, is it a three or a four, okay? So right now this is quote a two cycle and with cycle length four because we have this repeating pattern of ace through four and it occurs twice, okay? So this is a two cycle uh, where the cycle length is four. Now the point I was making is if this little card here were moved to the bottom, which is what cutting the card, cards can do, it, could, it moves blocks of cards from the top to the bottom, well what would that do? Well all that would do is it would now move the ace of clubs down here. Right? Well, is this still a, quote, two cycle? Is there a repeating pattern that occurs twice? Well, there is, because here, look, this is two, three, four, ace. Two, three, four, ace. Okay? And so it doesn't matter how, where you cut the cards, this will still be a repeating pattern that occurs twice. Now it does change like which card begins the pattern, but the fact that it's a repeating pattern uh, twice uh, is, is, this is not lost. That's not hurt in any way by cutting the cards.
Okay, so uh, that so that allows us to do what's called a Charlie shuffle. If you want to look up my video on the Charlie shuffle, that's where you do you push over a number of cards and then from the bottom you deposit those on top and then you take some of the top cards here and you kind of set those at the bottom and then bottom to top top to bottom bottom to top now a charlie shuffle which is something i just did now is equivalent to cutting the cards at some location it's equivalent to doing that well that kind of action doesn't hurt a quote two cycle it won't hurt a cyclic construction, some kind of listing of the cards that has a pattern that repeats, you know, two or three times, two or more times. Okay, so um, that kind of explains how we we can, you know, ostensibly mix it here, um, and we are mixing it. We're we're essentially cutting the deck, uh, but that won't hurt the structure that we uh, set up and that we need for this to work. Okay, so now look at what happens. So, if I fan these out for a card to be chosen freely, so maybe the spectator chooses this one. Now this time, why don't we go ahead and just show it from the start. Okay, so uh, the, the card that we're going to try to figure out quickly is the Four of Hearts, okay? Now, um, re you think about where, okay, the Four of Hearts, where did it come from? It, it was on top of this one, but below that one. That's where I took it from. Now, I don't know if you caught this or not, but when I put out a card that was selected, I did not put the deck back together with the portions in the same order as they were originally. I actually reversed those two portions of the deck. Okay. Well, how does that help us? Well, we're going to find out here because now if I actually uh, ribbon spread these on the table, and that wasn't a very good one because we went off camera, so I'll try again. <laughs> okay, part of the reason is the four of hearts is in the way. Okay, so I just ribbon spread the cards on the table and it's, it is helpful to do it in such a way that you can, you know, see the, what are called the pips. You can see the identity of the cards. Okay, so now what will happen? Think about this. Um, the card that I took out, this one here, is going to be relay, it's going to be sandwiched between this card here and this one here, okay? And so what I need to do to find out, okay, what card was there to begin with, because I don't know, what you do is you come in here and I'm looking for a black jack and an, a red eight. So do you see in here somewhere um, a black jack and a red eight? Well, I imagine you do. It's right here. Black jack. A red eight. Look at what's between those two. It's the four of diamonds. And the four of diamonds is the corresponding card. We call them companion cards. So when two cards have the same value and the same color, we say that they're companion cards. So that's some vocabulary that's helpful. But look at what's happening. Sandwich between the red eight and the black jack is a red four. So what that tells is because of this pattern that we set up, the card that was removed that goes between these two must be the companion to the four of diamonds, which we know is the four of hearts. So really all you have to do after you've set out the, you have them choose a card, you reverse the portions of the deck, you fan it out, so ribbon spread it on the table, and then just find the card that's in between these two of, of that, the, the values of these cards and their color. So you just come in here, and so it would be right there. Uh, we would be able to immediately conclude that this has to be the Four of Hearts. Now we're going to practice here in just a minute to get you um, feeling comfortable with this. 
Um, but there is a way to actually make this uh, detection process even easier and faster, okay? And so this is the rule I follow, and it works every time, of course, is if you spread the cards from left to right, like I've done here, that's how I did I went from left to right. All I have to do is find the other red eight here, the other red eight. And I know that the companion card to this one is going to be the card right to, to the right of the red eight, okay? So if you fan it to the right or ribbon spread it to the right, the card you're looking for will be found on the right side of this eight, red eight. And I spot it as a, a red four, it's a four of diamonds, so that means this must be a four of hearts. And the amazing thing about this effect is that if you put the card right, you know, where it seems like it would be reasonable to put it, just put it there and close it up, you have reset the entire deck. It's back to a two cycle structure. You have not harmed it or undermined the structure in any way. So what that allows you to do is perform this over and over and over. And I can tell you that you could perform this probably a thousand times to the same spectator and they would still not detect exactly how you did it. Now, eventually they might detect that you've reversed the order of the stacking if you're, you know, um, if they're really paying attention. But that's really about the only thing that they would notice unless they stare at those cards for a very long time. Okay, so let's go ahead and just practice together here. So if, if, if you want to mix the cards, that's fine. There's really no need to actually, but, or at least cut them. You can cut the cards. Okay, so a card is freely selected. Okay, so maybe they choose this one. Okay, so this one here, so I'll set it down. Now, the deck normally would go back together like this. If I want to keep the portions in the same order. But what you do is you just switch the order of those halves or portions of the deck. And now what will be true is if I ribbon spread this from left, so as soon as, in fact, let me just back up here, I'm sorry. So as I, they've taken their card and then I turn it over to get ready for a ribbon spread on the table. Now what I do is I immediately kind of store in my little memory a black five. A black five is what I will be looking for. And in particular, I will be looking for the card that is immediately to the right of the black five. So you, you, you're given a second or two to kind of discover, okay, this is what I'm going to look for. So you're already ahead of the game and now you just fan them out and you're quickly finding the black five. There it is. The card to the right of it is a black eight. So that means, and the companion card to the eight of clubs is the eight of spades. And there it is. There's the eight of spades. So you can close this up again and maybe have the spectator cut it wherever they want or do a Charlie shuffle. We'll do one more with just one card selection and then we'll do multiple cards. Okay, so maybe they ask for this one. And it is a good idea to just have them point to, point to a, a card in the spread instead of grabbing it. Okay, and then, you know, without drawing any attention to it, you know, try to kind of hide the fact that you've, you know, you've stacked them in opposite order. And then remember, as soon as you turn this over, Pay attention, go, oh, okay, black eight. I'm going to be looking to find where is the black eight, okay? And so you're already kind of uh, primed to do that. And so I'm gonna quickly find the black eight and you can probably spot it as fast or faster than I can. There it is. And then I know that the card here is the companion card to the one that's next to my black eight. So that means this must be the 10 of spades, and it is. 
Okay. Wow, isn't that amazing? And with a little bit of practice, you can get really fast at locating that card and then deducing what their, this randomly chosen card must have been. And for the spectator, it really is just mind-blowing. They think that you're some kind of savant or something, some kind of superhuman. They, they honestly do. It's like, how are you doing this? Okay. Now, if you want to do multiple um, cards, it's not much different, actually. Um, so what you do is you just have them point to two consecutive cards. And now maybe they point to these two. Okay. So you just set those down. Now, don't change their order. Just set them down and then reverse the order of these portions of the deck. Turn this over, and now in my mind I'm thinking, red queen, red queen. <laughs> find the other red queen as fast as you can. Okay, so you find the other red queen, which you can see is right there. Okay, and now what will happen is the two cards to the right of the red queen. Not just the one to the right, but there's two of them here. And so I know that um, this one here is the five of spades, and then this one here is the eight of clubs. You see that? And then if I just set them back, I, I, I maintain their order. Oops, sorry, I've gone off camera. I've maintained their order there. I've just set them back. And then if you close it up, and you can cut the cards now, or shortly shuffle the cards, you can do it again. You can do two. Um, why don't we go ahead and just jump to four, and then um, I'll then move on to showing you how to build this wonderful uh, little packet. Okay, so you just uh, spread out the cards for them to point to um, four consecutive cards. So maybe they want, uh, let's say they want these four right here. They want you to quickly deduce, figure out <laughs> the identity of those four cards. Now, the, you need to remember to reverse the order. That, it, it really is the only step <laughs> you have to remember. Now, I say that laughingly because it's amazing how often I would forget that step uh, for the first, you know, so many times, um, you know, uh, performing this. It's like I have one thing, just one thing I need to remember to do, and I don't remember to do it. So you just have to make sure you reverse the order, and then you are in the clear. It's going to work. So once again, so it's black six, so think black six, black six, and you're going to be looking for the four cards to the right of it, to the right of it. And so the black six is right there, of course. Okay, so the four cards to the right are, are these right here. Uh, a 10, queen, two, and king. But remember, these are the companion cards. So that means the top card here is going to be um, the 10 of hearts, of course. The next one will be the queen of clubs. The next one will be the two of clubs. And the last one is the king of clubs, okay? And then if you just set those back on top, you have not harmed in any way your special packet structure. Okay, so I'm hoping that you can see that, that my statement about how amazing this mathematical card effect is um, was not hyperbole. It really is a great, great result. Now, um, I'll show you how to set up a packet so that it works. And um, what I do, um, I haven't done it with this packet of cards, but I do have a packet of cards um, uh, that I use where I've set it up with this special kind of structure. And then I've written on it, detecting missing card. So what that means then is um, I've set it up so that it, the, you know, it's a two cycle. It's going to work for me. And it saves me the, the effort of having to rebuild the, the uh, deck every time. So I have like a dedicated you know, packet or a dedicated deck to this one effect because it's such a great one. Okay, so let's go ahead and show you how, how do you build one from scratch. Okay, so we're going to do it. <laughs> so here we go. Mm -hmm. We've just destroyed 
we've just destroyed uh, what I had there, okay? And this is really where I started. You know, minutes before this recording, I had to kind of set up a packet that would work. And so this is kind of the place where I had started. <laughs> so, okay, so what you do here is you can just spread out the cards so you can see things. Um, okay, so you just began, so what you, so I, I, I chose a black seven. So what I need to do is I need to find the other black seven, and now I'm going to begin to build up two piles. That's what I'll do. And so, um, and so each pile will be exactly the same as far as at each level, we're going to have companion cards cards of the same value and same color. Now you may want to mix, like as you build these in pairs, you may want to mix the reds with the black so that it looks kind of random. So maybe we'll do another black maybe. So here I have an ace, a black, you know, an ace of spades, ace of uh, clubs, and you can even alternate, well not, don't alternate them perfectly, but you, you know, randomize the um, suits a bit too, okay? Um, now maybe we'll go to um, a red one. So I grab this red queen. Let's go ahead and just grab the other red queen. There we go. So we're kind of making our way up. Uh, maybe we'll do a black five next. And here's a black five. I'll just set those down. Um, maybe we'll do another black card. Maybe, uh, maybe a king this time. So a black king and a black king. So two black kings. Um, if you want to, you know, it's okay to have you know, two suits next to each other. That can happen randomly. So uh, you just don't want clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds perfectly <laughs> alternating throughout or something. Um, why don't we do uh, maybe a couple of red aces now? So I have an ace of diamonds, ace of hearts. Okay. And let's see, maybe um, some red eights would probably be fine to do next. Okay, and we can alternate them this time if you want as far as the suits. Um, and maybe we'll do a queens again. Okay, so black queens. Okay, and uh, maybe a red nines would, you know, would be fine to do. Um, so I'm obviously not showing everything very well. Um, now, sometimes you can have numbers of, you know, values that are one off. Maybe we'll alternate, at least alternate the suits. And maybe we'll do a couple of black twos, uh, a couple of black uh, jacks even. The other one's over here. Okay. Um, what about the red fours? Okay, so I think you get the idea. This is how you would build it up. And if, when you're done, you can kind of spread it out, and if you're not happy with you know what it looks like in terms of if, if it doesn't look kind of random enough for you, then you can you know rearrange uh, cards a bit um, so that um, you know the colors you don't have alternating colors or something like that. When I originally set up the one for today for this effect, I noticed that I had a lot of um, uh, you know, alternate, alternating colors, or I had two of the same color. I never had like three of the same color. Well, that kind of thing happens when you technically randomize a deck. So I kind of adjusted that a little bit just to make it, um, in fact, I'm probably doing the same thing here, come to think of it. <laughs> I probably just did the same thing again. So why don't we do three, make sure I do three reds. Okay, and then we'll do, we'll do a couple of blacks. <coughs> and a couple of reds. Okay, so let me just, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spread them out uh, like this. And then one below it, just to kind of show you what we're looking at. And then you can kind of check for yourself that yes, indeed, um, I actually did this just to make sure I didn't make a mistake. So you kind of come through here and make sure that they're like lined up this way. You have a companion card in the same position and it's half of the deck. Um, and, and then, you know, good mixture of cards. 
it does look like I kind of did what I did before, but <laughs> where I have either alternating colors or they're in pairs, but, uh, but I did put three blacks together and three reds and whatever. So that's probably not too bad. So this is technically one of the cycles. Sorry, you can't see my finger. This is one of the cycles right here. And then this is one of the cycles for our quote two cycle. So if you close this up and close this up like that, and you can stack in either order, you now have a cyclic packet. Um, in particular, you have what's called a two cycle. And the cycle length here is 26. It takes you 26 positions <laughs> before the card values and colors repeat. So the huge cycle length, uh, but only two cycles, okay? So that's how you build it. And so why don't we go ahead and use our newly built packet to do just one more here. So here, I, maybe the spectator chooses that one. Remember to reverse those portions of the deck. Turn this over. Now think uh, black, <laughs> black six. So I'm looking for what's next to, to the right of the black six. Well, there's the black six, two, diamonds this must be two of hearts and it is so anyway this one is really a lot of fun to perform and even more fun i think to watch if you don't know how it's done it's just mind-boggling as to how the performer could possibly so quickly detect which card's missing so that's why i call it detecting the missing card so i hope you enjoy that uh, mathematically speaking, it's a fairly simple effect, but once again, um, it's one that's very difficult to detect by the spectator as to what's going on, unless they're giving, given a lot of time to inspect that packet, which they're never really given much time because you spread it out and you quickly find the card and then you close it up again. So this one is a keeper, as I said, so it is worth mastering. So um, I appreciate you watching.